Okay, so a few, I think it was a few weeks ago, um, Windows, something I don't normally pay much attention to, released an update in their beta and development channels, and it's called Xbox Full Screen Experience. Now, you may have heard this on the internet about the ROG allies and their Xbox handhelds, but the idea is, is to put this full screen experience onto the desktop. So if you're in the beta channel or the dev channel, you can download this and basically use it. Now, what is it about? Obviously, things like Steam are like full, um, you know, and Steam OS are very much tuned to play games. The whole thing. Steam OS is all about gaming. Windows isn't. Windows is tons of stuff. Um, and basically, that Microsoft had come up with a way to sort of basically lower the overhead from Windows and allow you to play games at full tilt, which is a great idea in principle. However, there seems to be, and you'll see, there's still a lot of garbage involved, which is pretty standard for a Windows product. Um, and is it any good? So what I was just going to do is going to do some benchmarks in uh, Xbox full screen experience and then compare them to like Amarchi with its games launcher and, and that kind of environment. Obviously, the other, you know, the other environment would be uh, GameScope or any sort of GameScope thing on Catchy or any of the other Linux distributions that take over the system and just play games. So what we'll do is we jump into uh, Windows and you can just you can have a look at it. And uh, yeah, and then we can just have some do some benchmarks and then you can sort of compare now. Yeah. So you'll see, obviously, Windows is going to perform better than Linux. That's just a said, but it's like how much what it is like a 10 frames per second worth worth giving up all that Linux can give you to go back to this mess monstrosity that's Windows 11. Anyway, with that said, let's dive in. OK, so here we are, Windows 11 desktop, usual suspects, um, horrendous things. Anyway, let's not spend too time, too much time on this. I'm just showing it for demonstration purposes. Anyway, so basically what you have to do, be in the Windows 11 um, insiders program, switch to the beta channel or the developers channel, then you can download this and then you get this. And how it's activated is super or Windows key, super, super shift G. Super Super G, sorry. Okay, and then this thing pops up and you get this games bar. And at the top here, you've got audio controls, turn that on and off, capture, performance tab, so you can see how much GPU and CPU stuff's being used. I'm not going to press that. I do not need AI to choose my games or help me play my games. Then there's a social thing for Xbox, click through enabled. Then you've got your settings, which I've got popped up. And then what you can do is just enter full screen experience. Now I've left the clicker on. So now we're going to come into, if he says that, this is where it went wrong last time. Let's come out of that. Super Shift G, I don't want. Is he now lost the keys? Super G, exit full screen experience, continue. Let's get rid of the stupid store, close window. Get rid of that. That's horrible. Come on. Close. Right. Now let's go into Super Shift G. Super G. Super G. Enter full screen experience. There we are. Okay. So now we're on the desktop. That's horrible. And we're on the desktop now. So you've got your Games Pass games. You've got your library of stuff. It's really weird the way that they've done this. Look, if I click owned, I've got no games because it's it's a really bad. I know this is beta, but you're supposed to be able to just click. Do you know what I mean? It's just a weird way they've done that. It's not showing up. So I'm clicking on games. I, I know I've got there, but it just it selects the last filter. So the filter system is not great. OK, so you've got your games pass, you've got your library, as I just showed you, cloud gaming. And then in it, no, oh, I've done it again. I don't want to click the store button. Otherwise, that store thing launches. And basically in here somewhere on one of these, I've got, it says apps, games pass. Oh, where's it gone? Play later, all my games, Xbox games, Steam's game, install games. There's a thing here that shows apps, which I can't find again. But you're supposed to do this with an Xbox controller and be able to tab around. Anyway, let's just launch a game. So that's on Steam. There we are. So you can play it. You'd see it in Steam and it'll auto launch. There we go. We launch it on Steam. Close that. And then you can play it from there. So we're going to launch it. So open Steam. I don't want to open Steam. I just want to let it do its thing. He says. 
There we go. So there, there you go. You enter Returnal, and we'll we'll sort of benchmark this. Um, but again, I mean, I've got like the NVIDIA overlays like, kicked in. Um, yeah. So you're sort of inside them. I mean, obviously, no signal. Obviously, you can launch the Xbox games in here. Press to return. And then let's just get into it. Okay, there we are in Returnal. And then just, just I can jump into the settings. I'll do the I'll do the benchmarks in a moment. So then just come out and cycle. What happens? Okay, and then we're back to this. Now there's somewhere in here. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm just purely just showing you this. There's an app window that allows you to, it shows you play later, play history, install queue, install options. I don't know where that is. Does it show my apps? Subscriptions inside a program. You know, if you're, if you're basically um, au fait with an Xbox, then you're going to be right with this. And then to come out of this, it's Super G again, and then you can go to exit full screen experience. There we go, and then continue back to desktop, and we're back. So that's it. So that's Windows, Windows Microsoft's attempt at like game scope, uh, fully immersive everything. I mean, I've got the benchmarks of this, and what we'll do is we'll jump into a March in a minute, and then we'll run the benchmarks in there as well, and we'll, <clears throat> we'll see the difference. <clears throat> Obviously, you know from the get go that Windows will be better, but it's like it's this, isn't it? I mean, is this worth it? Is this is this really? Oh man, I hate Windows. Hate it. It's just so much stuff. It's not um play later. I can't no notifications, no. There's a thing on here that's just apps and I can't find but they updated this since I literally because the first thing when I updated when I literally opened it up 20 minutes ago, it just did a mass of updates on the Microsoft store. Anyway, okay, let's have a get to get that out. And then yeah, so you've got what's that widget menu? So yeah, you've got widgets, gaming copilot. I don't think so. Lots of these controls inside this. Click enable click through. And there's the settings, show keyboard, more settings. Here we go. Windows opening settings. Oh my god. And this is the bit I can't understand. You can't get How do I get out of this? Anyway, I've had enough of that. The switch to for, the switch back to me. So yeah, so that's Windows 11 game thing. Um, I thought we'd just have a look at it. I mean, I'm not, I don't take it too seriously. I know that they're trying desperately to regain for consoles. I mean, that's obviously where there's big business. Uh, and obviously you've got the impending release of the Steam box coming out as well. I mean, but it's really interesting to watch reviewers. The first thing reviewers normally do when they get like, a windows based device is either put something like bazai on it or um or they try and install steam do you know what i mean so it's basically the quicker as quick as they could work on this the quicker gamers try and get it into a different platform i mean there's tons of these things out i mean let's say it's a good effort i mean the xbox i've got on the xbox is a interesting platform um and all that but i don't know about how they're gonna you know get rid of everything in the background that goes on with a Windows 11 installation and run pure gaming like you do with Steam. You've got like nothing going on in the background. I mean, that thing was trying to load up Microsoft 365 Copilot. It was trying to load up Copilot. It was trying to load up all these other bits in the back that I just don't need before I even launched a game. And I had to switch them off. So anyway, let's dive into Amarchi and let's have a look at the benchmarks. And then, you know, we'll have a chat at the Okay, so here we are on Amarchi and I'll control Super, Super Control S, performance mode, 1440p, four stats, and then it will launch into GameScoop. And then we'll run some benchmarks against Xbox full screen experience. Here we go. So, let it boot up. Returnal, and we'll dive in. So 
it'll be quickly seen. I've got this set at epic quality and 1440p. And so just let it do its thing. I mean, we're turning into one of the new ones I've started to benchmark because it's it's quite tricky. It's more it's quite a modern game, but it's got a good benchmark in it. And it works really well on um, Linux and Windows. So let's see what we get out of this. Now this has got no frame gen and DLSS is set to quality. I mean, the main target is obviously to get it above 60 frames a second, but more is good. So, I mean, and the 5060 Ti, which this is being done on, I mean, the Xbox, the, the hardware is the same. I've literally got two SSDs. One's got Windows on it. One's got a Marchi on it. <clears throat> Here we go. I'm going to have to play this again. I could never do it on the PlayStation. It used to drive me insane. But it's a beautiful game. I'm sort of mi I'm sure I've missed out on how to do things in it. I'm going to, have to watch a playthrough or something and get some tips. But it's yeah, it's a great game. Doesn't use much RAM. Five gig of RAM, five gig of VRAM. So yeah, so <clears throat> interesting doing this. I mean, you know, it's sort of what do you do? Do you give up a bit of good looks for frame rate? You know, productivity for frame rate, giving away all your personal details, Microsoft Copilot rubbish, uh, you know, uncontrollable AI. Or do you lose 20 frames per second or 10 frames per second or something, you know? It's an interesting trade-off, really, isn't it? I mean, to me, over 60 is brilliant. You know, I don't have a, I've only got a 60 hertz monitor. Here we go. What are we getting for this? This is a Marchi. So and we're getting 96 frames per second. It's well above the 60 threshold. And they should flip over to the Xbox full screen experience. Basically, Windows, tweaked Windows. And what are we going to get from that? There we go, 132 frames per second, bit of a jump there. Exactly the same settings, exactly the same hardware. But yeah, you see, obviously that does quite well on, on Xbox or Windows. So yeah, but I mean, all right, so Homeworld 3. Now this is the, which one's this? This is the Xbox run. And this has got, again, pretty useful benchmark on it actually it's quite a tricky one because it, it loads the scene up at the end and it can bring machines to its knees the end bit when it loads everything in this is on epic settings as well not the best of the franchise it's okay i like the one on the i like the first one obviously it's a classic second one's pretty good the one on the ground i come up with that home vaults deserts of karak that's pretty cool. That was totally out of the blue, that one. A bit left field, but I like that. So here it goes. It loads the scene up. You see the frame rate just like drops away. What are we going to get out of you? Average 79 frames per second. CPU bound, GPU bound. 42 and 100. What are we going to get from our Archie? 43 There we are. That frame time graph's a bit suspect, but it's got 81 frames per second. I might run that again, but yeah. GPU bound, CPU max, 140 milliseconds. Not sure about that one, but about the same, a bit more. Okay, so here we go into the classic benchmark of benchmarking tools is Cyberpunk 2027. And I've got the latest, very, very latest NVIDIA drivers, the 15596 on the Windows 11 Xbox thing. So, it's, and obviously your help, you know, the drivers on Linux are behind, I think it's 5080. So you don't have as optimized drivers on it. But I mean, let's have a look. What are we going to get from this? 90, 90, 100 probably out of this, I think. Here 
there you go 100 frames a second at least but again you know 60s i've got 60 hertz monitor so everything above 60 is wasted really isn't it? it it's like you know it's silky smooth at, at 60 frames a second so i don't you know i don't know i mean i could crank up you could obviously with this the xbox one you could crank up the settings a bit more this is on ultra no ray tracing no frame gen and dlss is on quality I'll sort of level the playing field there because obviously in Windows it can do ray tracing a lot better. Um, that's that one. A hundred frames, hundred and one, hundred and one frames a second. It's not bad. Pretty good. And what are we going to get from a Marchi? Hundred and one uh, against. 87 so that's 13 frames per second difference if my 14 frames per second difference my math held correct so there you go let's come back to me so yeah so it's very valiant effort from windows to do this xbox portal you can see they're feeling the pressure from steam and things like this and and it is good you want to separate your gaming away you know uh, from your day-to-day -day excel spreadsheets and chat gpt but it, i don't know i mean obviously as you saw it's very uncomfortable in windows 11 there doing the gaming thing i've only done it to make a video and i wouldn't use it day-to-day -day anymore I mean, I, I switched from windows 20 25 years ago 20 years ago to mac and then from mac to linux recently so it's interesting though i mean but the bulk of the gaming is still done on windows it's great that they've tried to do this but it is funny that you see the especially because that's designed for handhelds many you know in many ways that's for handhelds to optimize them is it funny that the moment you know as i said at the beginning of the video people get those handhelds that are specifically for xbox and immediately try and put bazite or run steam on it you know it, it's um it's very good for the linux community that steam's there i mean it's like the driving force behind gaming no one wants to start the ea platform and all these other bits that everybody's trying to do like digital download games to you know but steam has just like gone forward so hats off to valve for all that so i don't think that's useful at all it just shows you there's not that much of a difference between running those games those three games a lot of games on linux compared to windows if you're happy with you know losing 10 or 15 frames per second on something if you've got a reasonable enough card then you've got the freedom of a linux operating system to do what you want and you've got something potentially as beautiful as marchy that you know it's just like i'm persuaded by it. it's just fantastic for me to use whereas windows 11 i literally got vertigo looking at the thing and and flashbacks of you know uh, windows what was it called aero extensions windows 8 i remember looking at things like that i mean it, it's not fun and i i've always had this thing with windows i never knew what was going on under the hood and it always disturbed me. And even more now when i launched windows that time it came up with microsoft 360 copilot bing the adverts and everything and it, i just don't want it anyway so there you go i hope that's useful a quick look we won't be going back to windows very often on this channel i can tell you that for starters but anyway quick look at xbox full screen experience on windows 11 beta anyway hope that's useful for someone um thanks for watching